Morning, morning, everybody. Michelle is here on this Friday, March the 29th, 2024. What you say? See how this month just flew by? <laughs> That's why it's so important to get things done. Your time is literally running out because there are certain factors that we have to consider that, you know, I've said so many times, we've missed so many opportunities. So many opportunities have been missed and you can't regain a lot of opportunities as they were. They just uh, morph themselves into something else. But there, there are a lot of times where a lot of us have missed opportunities because we don't resolve things and we don't get things done and we like to procrastinate. We always like to say, oh, I'll take care of it tomorrow. You ain't going to take care of nothing tomorrow if you don't take care of it today. <laughs> so, oh, man. Um, so this month was supposedly, I know that today is some it's a holiday for people that, you know, religious people. I'm not religious as, at all. I hope I made that clear. I have no no problems with religious people any more than I do with people who are non-religious or atheists or, or Buddhas and whatever people are calling themselves. I have no issue about all of that because it's irrelevant to me, whether you're religious or not. You know, it's, it's almost like wearing a hat these days. You know, I'm, either you wear a hat or you don't. You know, that's just how, how frail some of our so-called beliefs are. Our beliefs are f frail, and they're starting to disintegrate and become useless and meaningless. And again, that's not being offensive, but it's just the cause and effect and results. You know, when people talk about how religious they are, and, and, and that's usually people that are self-righteous that, do, that does that, because no one really needs to know that. No one really needs to know whether you're religious or not. That's a, that should be something to be held to your chest and something that you uphold yourself any more than your values. Anybody running around talking about their values and talk about their virtues and, you know, how, how knowledgeable, knowledgeable they are. That's the main one, how people just want to project that so forcefully. They want to force that on people about how smart they are, how intelligent they are, how better than they are than others. You know, it's that self-righteous, but it's um, a contradiction because it's actually self-hatred for people to want to pro proclaim such, a, such things about themselves. Again, no one needs to know that, whether you're religious or not. You know, just uh, let the results speak for themselves. People paying attention to how you model yourself. And that comes to something I want to talk about when it regards uh, safety. You know, the safety of more so women, biological women. And that's what I advocate for is safety of biological women. And that's why I, that's more or less why I choose to, to, to do these videos. Because there's, the, there's this, this danger towards biological women and more so specifically women of color, black women. If you want to, you know, take it, take it, take it there. There's this safety factor that's, that's, uh, that's had been happening for a while and it's, I think it started way back in the 50s 60s when the black man the black father the black husband was taken out of the homes and you know the homes were broke were intentionally you know torn apart to get the black man out to get the black man to fight in these wars you know be on the front lines of these wars um, so I don't know how it happened, but thankfully my dad did not fight in any war. I think that's almost a, a badge of honor in itself. He did not have to go. He didn't, he, 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 for some reason, he did not go or was not drafted. I'm not sure what the, the circumstances were, but um, thankfully he was there to protect our family, protect my mother, you know, his children, his grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren. And also the neighborhood, you know, he protected the neighborhood, the culture as well. So I, I come to I come to the um, oh God, these computers. I come to the um, all right, good. I come to the um, 
this um, conclusion, not, not necessarily conclusion. All what I do is, you know, I base things on action and behaviors and what I sense and receive and how I observe things. And I know for a fact that women do not feel safe around men. All right, let me just explain that. And again, these are my theories and opinions. These are what I have cultivated, contemplated, meditated on, and not ruminate on. So, what I noticed, and like I said, as a young girl, a young woman, a young child, a young teenager, young adolescent, whatever you want to, you know, project that I had to, I, I'm so thankful that I had that, 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 um, that I had a dominant vision, a uh, dominant, uh, uh, way of expressing myself. And it was through my vision, you know, being a visionary type person as well, auditory and everything else. But that was, that was something because what people were saying and what I saw, it was always, whoa, whoa, whoa you know, where did that come from? It just didn't, it didn't line up properly for me. So, let's see. Maybe too much goddamn light. Yeah, I'll t I, I, I think I got enough light in here to, oof, God, that blinded me. So anyway, as a young girl, young child, young adolescent, young teenager, whatever, a young person, how about that, you know, because we, we've been so confused with the pronouns and, you know, all this confusion, everything's a massive, massive, massive confusion, especially when it comes to our biology and understanding the role of biology and understand the role of, of uh, gender and understand the role of sexuality. And we are attempting to kind of, you know, we're attempting to smash that all together, the masculine and the feminine especially, and not properly understand the role or understand the complexities of it and why it has to exist in order to keep a balance on the planet. So I noticed, again, as a young adolescent, um, I had to, I, um, I was so thankful that I paid attention more so what people were doing versus what they were saying. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, that wasn't something that uh, my development would allow. So I always paid attention to what people were, what they were doing with their eyes. And, um, uh, and I, I, I was constantly getting contradictions, constantly. And I can remember going to my mom and and saying that to her in such a way. Um, and that bothered a lot of my a lot of my associations. And that my associations could be relatives, neighbors, strangers, just so we can keep it so people don't think I'm oh gosh, she talking about me. You know, a lot of people get always have this belief that everything is about them. And those are the ones that are creating nothing but uh, havoc on this planet. You know, they're creating war, unnecessary war uh, among ourselves, literally, figuratively, and merit metaphorically. You know, we certain people are creating war because of their... Uh, they haven't just developed themselves properly, and I say it has verged on to to self hatred. They 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 particularly hate themselves, and so that's I mean, can you imagine feeling that? I told you, just imagine. I mean, when I'm in the, in the fire of someone's uh, self hatred, and they are projecting their hatred towards me, whether it's on a phone, in person, or whatever, that hurts. That literally hurts my um, my physical, my you know it just hurts because that's that's some painful energy somebody is projecting at you and you and you sense it because it's it's a strong impulse of uh, a discomfort 
And and this is like I said, stay uncomfortable, but you don't you don't want to be have any discomfort, and that's that's something completely different. So make sure you understand understand what I mean when I say that. Um, like I told you when I uh, used to work in in an office, you know, back in my middle twenties, remember that woman that was calling, you know, calling on the phone, and in the beginning she had fire in her voice. She had rage or something. It was very discomforting. But then it turns out it was just a misunderstanding as to how we were approaching her. And so I took the time to understand this woman and understand what is really going on with you. And it turns out she, there was nothing wrong with her. It's just she may have had some type of interaction with some of the other employees in the office because, oh, boy. Let me tell you, it was like in that particular office, it was just like having raging cats. <laughs> nothing but women, okay? It was nothing but women. Hey. And they were like raging cats, you know, constantly clawing at each other. And, and I'm in there just attempting to just, oh my God, how can I, um, you know, get myself through all of this? And I, and I eventually did. We all started to understand each other better and relax because, um, I was uh, the only black female in there for a long time. I, I was. I was a young little, young chick, you know, up, up in there. Like a young chick. <laughs> you remember how we used to say that chick and, and all these names? And that's, that's crazy and confusing in itself as well. And then, you know, then others started, other nationalities started coming in and blah, blah, blah. So, you know. I just, I think being visual, like I said, helped save my life because I was constantly, constantly harassed by older men, constantly. And even my next door neighbor, okay, he was a predator. And I hope I'm not offending people that knew him because I know a lot of people had, had you know, that may be on my page that knew this man and, um, you know, and he was a predator. Let's just be clear and effective. And, 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 and if he were alive today and behaving as he, as he was, he would definitely be in prison. He definitely would be. So anyway, I manage, like I said, with my visual, because I used to watch his eyes and I used to watch his eyes, how he, who he would be inappropriately paying attention to me. And I was what I knew, I would say, um, I mean, for his, you know, I, I managed to recognize his behavior. I was probably anywhere from 10 to 12 years old or 10 to 15 years old. So, or maybe even younger. But he was, um, he was definitely predator type. And he, and if it wasn't for the fact that he had some medical issues, he would have probably been in prison because he probably would have violated so many people you know, abusive, you know, uh, you know, turn out to be some type of, uh, who knows, but degenerate, deviate, most definitely. And so those type of, uh, men turn out to be serial rapists, serial killers, um, narcissistic, sociopath, psychopath, clerics, you name it, you know, th those, um, those titles or some of them would have related to him and his behavior. So I was, that's what I used to pay attention to. Cause like I said, he was inappropriately paying attention to me and my mom was, you know, and, and they're very, they're very clever. These type of personalities are very, very clever, deviant, degenerate and clever and dangerous. Okay. To, and so as we are approaching a certain reality, you know, as I say, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, you know, a cosmic event, whatever, you know, a shifting, everybody's saying shifting and, you know, we, we have so many words to it, but a lot of people don't know what the hell they're talking about most of the time. And that's unfortunate. They're just, they're turning into some type of supernatural event, turning into some type of a spiritual, um, uh, ascension, or, you know, some, some, something that is not necessarily uh, relatable. And also, that's not necessarily reality. 
a lot of people are delusion and illusionary about their thoughts and and also more so about their realities about what really is going on it's very simple if we all take the time and trust ourselves and trust the information that we we have within to know exactly what's going on okay it's is 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 becoming so extremely dangerous especially for women especially for young biological women okay whether they're toddlers or not they're still women girls daughters sisters nieces they are under uh, a lot of danger for their safety okay and some people may say oh you just you just uh what's that term uh hating on men and you know that's and that's that that's so unfortunate because that's not true at all i have no problems with men at all and the reason i can say what i say is because i had no interest in men at all growing up i did at one time because that's what i was told i was supposed to do but then i realized at a very young age okay that okay they're not my um um vision of love and i say vision of love in an intimate set you know in an intimate setting um i wanted i don't i didn't want any of that type of uh, involvement with them but i wanted them to be my friend you know i wanted to have a buddy a pal a friend blah 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 but i didn't want any of that type of the uh, sexual uh, attention from none of them. And I can remember when I was in my teenage years, I used to tell some of the guys, I said, hey, look, we can be friends and, and go out and hang out, go to the movies, this and that and the other. But I said, but when you want to be involved sexually, I said, you need to go somewhere else. I remember I said that to a guy. And he was like, well, so why would we be together? <laughs> exactly. So, um, he he eventually went on his went on his way thankfully so when i used to pay like i said i pay attention to the eyes the eyes are a window into what really is going on with people if you know what you're looking for see a lot of police officers or the law enforcement in general are delusionary about someone's eye movement and what people are saying and do they they're they are amateurs at that, in my opinion. That's why they fail so miserably when they are attempting to do investigations and this and that and the other, you know. But anyway, I know what to do, and um, I know how to, I know how to, you know, pick out when someone's telling me the truth. Usually, okay, I made that mistake. Uh, I guess a couple of days ago, where I was assuming something. And it turns out I was wrong and I made a mistake and I was so glad I did that because you know why? Because I wasn't picking up contradictions. Even though that, you know, there's always contradictions, but there's, there's a certain level of, of something that you will sense and receive about whether someone's telling you the truth or not. Okay. And it, and it takes a lot of work and practice. It takes trial and error and mistakes. So that's what we need to get over making assumptions about what someone's saying and and what someone's and what you are believing you are picking up from their eyes these people are sophisticated thinkers usually these predators and these de deviant type personalities they're very very clever in how to manage themselves i mean they i mean you can learn a whole lot from them from a you know from a negative if you want to say it from a negative fashion of a, of extreme negativity or extreme ism that, that they have uh, been able to morph into themselves. I mean, they're, 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 they're great actors. That's why they can be great actors. They can be great performers. You know, that's why they are great celebrities. You know, great influencers. Because they have managed that level of extreme, deviant, degenerate uh, traits of their character and personality that they have 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 sewn into their personalities where you know that you know like i said they can be talking about peace but then some you know in the eyes it's, it's in the thoughts see it starts in the thoughts 
Okay, that's where it starts. If you understand, it doesn't matter what they say. If you can't understand what they're thinking. But sometimes the eyes will have a certain movement to them, a certain, a certain something going on. And so you have to be simultaneous. You have to be at the same time, uh, try my mouth, paying attention to everything that they're doing. That's why you have to incorporate all your sensing into what someone's saying to you. Bring in some 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 abstract, subjective, objective. Uh, like I said, bring in. Is it logical? Is it rational? Is it reasonable? So that's why you have to you have to work on taking your time with people if you choose to. Um, I like to help people, okay. And but I'm going to be real honest. I cannot deal. And I plan to. I plan to de- help people. But I cannot do, deal with a certain factor of personalities anymore. Okay? Um, let me find another word instead of using this, this word here. Um, well, I'll say it. It's, it's that kind of, a lot of people call it superficial superficiality that superficial um and it's an ad it's a uh so i want to use something else because we say that a lot about superficial this what is it what does that really mean and it says here objective superficiality um pretending you know what I mean? Um, phony. A lot of people say it's phony. People are phony when they're superficial. And um, I can pick that up right away. And I'm sure everybody else can. You can pick up when people are being superficial with you. Can't you? You ought to. And so as I am helping people shallow, as I am helping people um I cannot, we're going to have to, as I'm helping you, we're going to have to erase all of that superficiality. Okay, all that pretending and, and this and that and the other so that we can be more clear and effective as how we are dealing with each other. You know, they do not think deeply. And and that's more so, you know, shallow, empty-headed, frivolous. <laughs> a lot of people just I mean we a lot of people we can pick that up if you're paying attention and you're incorporating a whole lot of things lack of substance you know like like I said it's an emptiness I can pick that up right away so before I can help someone they, that has to be resolved that type of um, way that you interact with each other so that you can be clear and effective about what is really going on so that you can save yourself and protect yourself. So that's what I've noticed about a lot of men. Okay, I'm just going to be very honest, and I, and, and a lot of and a lot of this is just to help. But and this is coming from my perspective as a biological woman towards biological men. Take it or leave it. Thankfully, there's billions of con- <laughs> well, yeah, I, I know it's millions and millions and maybe billions of pieces of content out there, whether it's in written form. In video and or in auditory, you know, with podcasts and such. So, when I was growing up, like I said, I wasn't sexually interested in men at all. Okay, so that means I could see past certain things and see past certain characteristics about them and their behaviors and actions. And I'm thankful that my 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 father, like I said, my father was I felt safe in his arms. Put it that way. You know, I felt safe in his arms. And I'm saying as a, as a young child, um, because he modeled safety and he modeled, uh, you know, he provided for us. You know, he had a, had a strong presence about himself. He was confident. He could, you know, but it wasn't necessarily, he didn't have to say any of it. He didn't have to say, oh, yeah, I'm a confident man. He didn't have, come on now, come on. And he didn't have to say he was a strong man. His actions and behaviors and results proved that 
he was a to me I thought he was a wonderful man now what what he was as a husband is completely different you would have to get that from my mom's perspective but I knew when I used to talk to her and get to understand her my goodness <laughs> just to get to understand her was that that was a challenge in itself but I knew what she loved about him was that he came home every night if he wasn't arrested <laughs> I'm just being honest he got arrested a two times because you know people are going to research that and you know whatever to but um he came home every night if he wasn't arrested or in the hospital <laughs> or working an overnight shift you know and then he would come but my mom always could depend on him depending on someone is is is, is you don't you you do not realize if you if you're not thinking clearly and effective how important that is for someone to depend on someone and know that they're protected and know that they are safe in their arms and that there will there's I never felt any inappropriateness for my dad ever ever but uh, you know I can't say that for the associations like I said you know whether they're family members friends associate uh, strangers da 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 in the culture or in my presence okay I used to could tell by the way um, older men would look at me, and that's how I know, okay? That's how I know, and that's how I was able to develop myself and protect myself from that when my dad could not. So, because, you know, I used to, we used to be free range and walk around in the neighborhood, and they were, they were there. They were predators there. They were predators in the culture. Not only good men, good law-abiding men, you know, those with mental illness, those with this or that or the other, okay? And a lot of them used to these used to use alcohol as an excuse for their behavior. Listen to me very carefully. A lot of them want to blame alcohol. No, that, that type of uh, deviancy and degeneracy is there, has always been there. They use alcohol, drugs, and other substance to blame it on that, you know, blame it on the alcohol, right, right? And that's anything but true. Okay, that's anything but true. So, yes, I, I'm thankful for the vision, the visions I had because they proved to be my saving grace, as I said. They helped me get through all of that attention, unwanted attention. And that brings me to this as well when I say, I said something about separation, Yes, there's going to be massive separation of, of people, of human beings. There's going to be massive uh, uh, invasions of people. There's going to be a massive movement and people attempting to escape an exodus of people just going all over the place. Because I think people are recognizing that we are massively, massively overpopulated with people. But they, nobody's going to say that. You know, because a lot of them are not going to say that because that's their livelihood. All of that is their livelihood, even though it's killing them. It's killing them. But they need that livelihood so they can continue with their material, you know, their accumulation of materialism. Okay. So the separation is going to be in such um, that women and men are going to be separating from each other. And I'm talking about the heterosexuals, that, that you know, whatever people want to call them these days. The, the, the heterosexual types are, are, are going to be separating from each other as well, okay? Because the women, the biological women, need a place of safety. And they know, with their ch because they usually are the ones with the children, because they know that they cannot depend on the large vastness of biological men to do so. Whatever happened back in the... 40s and 50s. I, I mean, I know what happened is that it, when that, like I said, when that atomic, those atomic bombs dropped, that adversely affected not only that region that they that it was pointing towards, but everybody on the planet. Okay, because we are we are aggressive. We are, are an aggressive species, you know, aggressive human beings. And war makes us more and more and more and more aggressive, okay, and deviant, in some cases, and degenerate. I mean, definitely degenerate. A 
okay? And it's affecting the male population more than the women right now, okay? Um, so that, that's that's going to separate. And what, what, what do I mean by that? So in my, in my interaction with people, like I said, I love to kind of kind of pay attention to how men and women are acting anyway around each other. And um, for as long as I can remember, I people have always said to me, Michelle, you make me feel safe. Or they'll run to me for safety or run to me for protection, especially in law enforcement when I was working in, as, in, in, uh, as a first responder. And it usually annoyed me because I, I'm telling you not to... I was constantly, constantly, constantly um, approached when I was on the streets, you know, doing one thing, you know, just, just attempting to do my job without, you know, being constantly approached and, 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 and people asking these superficial questions of me. And that used to bother me to, to no end. And it's just because they were just attempting to I know they're just attempting to to understand, okay, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And they were just more so curious and, and just want to know, what am I doing? You know, to see a woman in uniform is kind of fascinating for a lot of women. They like, they, they're they curious about that because I know women love men in uniforms. So they're kind of curious as to why women would be in uniform, right? You know, they, so, they, you know, they're kind of like, uh, it's a compliment, I know, but it's it's annoying, and um, and it was annoying, I should say, because of the because of the questions were superficial, and I knew they were, and it's like, okay, what do you really want? Just you know, be so. That's what we have to work on when we're developing ourselves, is to be honest and be straightforward, and ask appropriate questions of people, you know, and. Um, you know, and, and and take it off this shadow. You know these these superficial conversations and make it make it make it genuine and real and interesting and engaging conversations with people, or not, or the, or just leave people to fuck alone, right? So I sense again, women in general, it's regardless of their sexuality, are going to want to as well separate from the so-called biological man, okay? And it's because of safety, number one. The number one is the safety. Uh, number one is that they're, they know that they are just objects to, to the biological man, okay? Um, and I'm going to say something controversial in a minute, but the biological woman, regardless of her sexuality, she, she knows that she is... Uh, a object for the biological man. Okay, she knows that. Now, there's a difference with the gay man, the gay man that loves men. There's a difference with them because as a matter of fact, more biological heterosexual women prefer to have a gay male in their life. Why? For safety. Okay, for safety of their body. The woman want the woman wants to take back her her uh womanness and she and she wants that to be protected. And she doesn't want to be objectified, you know, where people are looking at them and all they're thinking about is, you know, fucking them. Let's be honest. Or hurting them and harming them. Because a lot of these degenerate deviant males, when they look at a woman, they are thinking about violence towards her, sexual violence towards her. They're not going who now who's gonna admit that? They're thinking about sexual violence towards that woman. They see her as an object, something to terrorize, something to harass, and something to, you know, and so the gay male, the gay men that love men are the ones that are gonna be able to protect the heterosexual. Or just protect women in general. Does that sound crazy? Does that sound... Think about it. Like I said, before, suspend your ego. Suspend your beliefs. Suspend this. You know, suspend things and listen to what I just said here. Biological women 
are in fear of their womanness. And it doesn't matter about their sexuality. The ones that are running around thinking they're masculine and this and that and the other, uh, I, I, I can guarantee you I can break through all of that and figure out what's really going on inside of that. That they are extremely masculine and, and going on and acting like they're men, and that comes from their mouth. They're, they're doing that for a reason, and that's for protection. They're just trying to protect their womanness. It doesn't matter if they're... Um, considered sexual uh considered masculine or not you know it, it's just it's just we don't have the right words to say that i am attracted to the feminine energy of a biological woman that's what i'm attracted to and i'm sure the other women that call themselves studs or masculine identified that's the same thing that they uh want as well they want that feminine energy in the form of a biological woman okay but it's different from from what the biological men want from that biological woman okay the deviancy in that biological man has caused them to be more of a threat to the woman than a protection Women feel that they, these biological men, cannot protect them. And, and, and there's evidence and results to prove it. Okay? Be gentle and kind with yourself, whether you're a biological male or biological female, because, and, 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 and not be concerned about how you are identifying yourself and how you are, your sexuality. All you have to do is pay attention to nature. What happens out in nature? Who protects in the nature? Usually it's the the, the quote-unquote male species. They're the protectors of their females and their offsprings. Okay? That is how, that is how you keep a planet balanced. And I know, you know, but... Because our planet is imbalanced, that's why we have all of these all of this confusion going on about the biologicalness of who we are, and we and then on top of that, we interfere with the the biological of how we identify ourselves, and we believe that we can just come in and, and, and interrupt the, the fabric of biological uh, of our biological makeup. Whether you, but it has nothing to do with who you're sleeping with or who you, or how you, what clothes you're wearing. That, that is the stuff that used to bother me as well. As I was noticing, as, as I was developing and progressing uh, and, and when I identified myself as a lesbian, um, Again, I used to be able to go into clubs, and I, and I remember this one particular city. I thought it, it was so progressive. It was, it, I thought it was, a, I thought it was a fairy tale, because I saw beautiful people together loving each other. I remember one time I went to this particular city, and um, I was around mostly men. Okay, these men were. Um, uh, they were gay males, okay? Let's, let's be clear about it. They were gay males, and I can remember being around them, and I and I was so impressed. And, the, and oh, I'll talk about the women in a minute, but with the men, because that's usually how I used to be able to relate is to the men, because the women were going through this kind of transitioning as well that started confusing me, and I didn't understand what the hell was going on. But what I loved about the males and their and when they were together. They were like best friends. Uh, I didn't see one or the other that was uh, uh, attempting to to crowd their masculinity over one or the other or cloud their femininity. They knew their roles. They were too handsome, you know. And there was several of them. So that's when I knew something something happened to us during the, and it happened in the nineties. In the middle 90s, something happened to our interaction with each other. 
where all of a sudden things started being warped and confused. But I, I just love that there is this one particular uh, um, couple. They had been married for a while. One was a pilot. You know what I mean? He was a pilot. They're, they're so so impressive. And the other one was a doctor. And um, they were married. They had been married for a while. And they had the best of a balance and, you know, uh, you know, that balance of energy where one day one would cook, the next day the other would cook. One day one would clean. You know, they had this beautiful balance of a relationship. Sadly, one of them did die, um, you know, but, and that's what I, that's what I, that was like, wow, I want to move there. And I had made plans to go there, but I just, I changed my mind because, you know, certain things, and then, and, and it was good that I did change my mind, because that's when I started seeing things warp, and everything becoming extreme, you know, because like I said, I used to, um, I mean, because I have no issue with being tomboyish, because I'm tomboyish, and, and, but, but I am still a bio, biological woman, okay, but what I saw was this extremism, everybody was, it was like, because it, it, it turned into a competition to get that feminine, feminine energy, Okay, and the feminine energy was confusing people as well, and and they, you know, and that happens too, you know, um, because all of a sudden the butch woman, which I which was used, or the bull dagger, you know, if you if you trace all of that history, became more and more and more and more quote unquote. Uh, identifying as men. You know, they thought that they had to be more man-like to keep the attention of the uh, that feminine energy. But in, in actuality, that feminine energy was just confused and couldn't tell that butch woman what she what they really wanted. So there was some miscommunication there or something. Something happened where their communication went off. And so what was happening to a lot of women, and I can remember this, they were getting their heart, a lot of women were getting their heart, uh, getting a lot of heartbreak. They were getting heartbreak after heartbreak after heartbreak. And it's because that feminine energy um, really preferred to be with a biological man but the biological man was changing so because the biological man was changing and becoming more feminine these feminine energy women I guess they thought well let's I mean you know instead of um working that out and being clear and effective about what they wanted from that man that biological man they thought they could find it in a in a woman a masculine woman Roll with me. And so what it turns out is what I'm attempting to say is there was just massive, massive confusion about what, who we are, what we are, and why we are. We made it, we, we turned it into something that's irrelevant, superficial. Okay. Our... Okay, as a biological woman, who I sleep with is irrelevant to the whole. As a biological man, I mean, you know, I'll let biological men speak for themselves on that. Okay, as a biological woman, again, who I am sexually attracted to is irrelevant to the whole. It's a part of it, of course. But it ought to be a celebration, you know, as a biological woman, it, you know, I, I celebrate the fact that I'm a biological woman and I'm so happy to be a biological woman, right? But who I choose to be intimate with is, 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 it's like the icing on the cake. Okay. But it's not, it doesn't, just because icing is not on the cake, it doesn't mean that it's not a cake. You understand me? So, 
And 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 I thought about this for the longest. You know, this is what I choose to be when it comes to who I want to love and who I want intimacy with. But it doesn't change anything else in a major fashion. It doesn't change my biology. And that's even in nature as well, if you pay attention to nature. So, as I'm seeing all of this, and I know uh, a lot of people are going to have their own responses to things. And I don't want you listening to my videos when you are looking to nitpick and, and, and target me and, um, what's the word, um, contradict, uh, uh, you know, you know, countering someone is different, but there's this, this hatred field type of personalities out there that are looking for any reason to cause people to break up the cause disharmony, you know, the ca cause people to be on the offense and some people to naturally want to defend themselves and want to have self-preservation just like anybody else. You're going to have that type of personality. That's just due to the, all of the energy that we have, the deviancy and degeneracy that's coming from the biological man. They're not going to accept that. So what they're going to do, what? What are they going to do? They're going to prove that this all the, on the woman. Yes, the, the biological woman is confused. That has, that is the same thing that's going on with the environment in general. Okay. They're confused because of the interference, the constant interference of the partnership of a man and a woman or a man and a man or a woman and a woman or however they want to uh, engage in their personal business like that. We make it, we make that, we, we want to know who you're sleeping with first before we, we want to know, you know, how are you doing? Uh, what's your line of work? That that's that that's the de deviancy, and and this, and the thing about the biological man, he has always seen, in my opinion, the the biological woman as an object, a property, something that belongs to him, that he can do whatever he chooses to. You know, that's that mentality, that's that sickness and degeneracy that's happening, de deviant, and that's been going on for hundreds of years actually. And we know that. How many men in, in various cultures see women as their property? Okay. So what is happening is for women, because women are the saving grace for all of this. That's, that's the point I'm making, you know, on this uh, day. I think this is the last day of, uh, of the month for the celebration of the woman. Is that, is that what this, go, you know, because I don't keep up with it. I just kind of use it as a, as a, um, as a uh, point of reference, let me look here. Uh, what's the day? Cause I I can cannot keep up with um. <clears throat> well, we still got you know the thirtieth and the thirty first. So, so what I've determined in my observations and my uh, over the course of decades. Because, like I said, I had no interest in men at all. So I had a lot of uh, uh, of time that's not filtered with, okay, I need to find a man. I need to get married. I need to have children. I, I didn't have all of that. Not at all. And I was able to pay attention to actually what is really going on with men. Uh, because I noticed how my mom was started acting towards my dad over a course of time where she was disgusted I'm just being honest she was disgusted to see him sometimes because I can remember her <laughs> many a times she'll be sitting on the couch she's um it's peaceful for her she's watching television minding her own business and then all of a sudden she sees this vehicle and then and I saw her whole disposition change because she knew that he is was gonna want all of her he wanted all of her time her body you know, and that's what happens, you know, all over her. And she got, you know, and all, after a while, she got disgusted with that. She got tired because if it wasn't for us grabbing all over her, he was wanting to do the same thing, grab all over her. And my mom 
possibly felt that she did not have control of her own being, her own body. And that's true, even to the day. Who is the one wanting to control the woman? The so-called, quote-unquote, biological man. Want to tell her when she can do this, when she wants, you know, because they still... In their warpness and in the, and because because of the state of the planet, the imbalance, the extremism, you know, they're um, they still have that mentality that we that biological women are property. They won't admit it. They do, they do not, and they will not ever see women as equal to them. Never, never. Now, I know a lot of people may not understand that throughout the course of our evolution. And throughout the course of how we, how we uh, are reborn, you know, we or a lot of people know it as reincarnation. There, your spirit form, which is just energy, like a battery, is is responsible for balancing that out. And what do I mean by that? Well, some day, some sometimes, you know, at some point, you know, if you are always a biological woman at some point you're going to be always biological men and this and it's going to be a and that's a million year evolution that I don't want anyone to be concerned about but at the same time um you are like I am a biological woman right now for a reason just as biological men are biological men right now for a reason okay but because we are so extreme we don't see it as an opportunity to understand my um, my femaleness <clears throat> or my maleness. We see it as an opportunity for um, all of these um, unrealistic, fantasized way that we are to uh, coexist, you know, or interact, or the interpersonal interpersonalness of it and we've um we've caused so much damage with our interpersonal relationships it's not in my opinion it's, it's going to take maybe a thousand years or more to resolve it okay if you think the interpersonal relationships are bad now you just wait just wait so that's what it is women are not and then also there's um you know, there was a reason why women were uh, fantasizing a lot and reading these uh, romance novels, which I, I'm glad I never read that. <laughs> um, and I even talked to my mom about this. I remember one time she did not find my dad attractive at all, you know, but she, she but there was something more to him that she, that that attracted her. And it was about and I think it was about being protected, being provided for. And, and she knew that he, because he, you know, he, he, um, he responded to her needs. But I know for a fact that she did not think he was attractive. And a lot of women will tell you that, that, they, that they're not necessarily attracted to their husband or their boyfriend. You know, they, there, was, there was something else there. You know, there was something else there. And that's, that's the most important part anyway. It's not what they physically look like. But for men, it's different. You know, you know, my dad thought my mom was beautiful and he, you know, and he loved to show her off when he used to take her to these parties that they used to have when he at his job and blah, blah, blah. So my point is this. Uh, there's going to be a separation, sadly, and it's going to be a separation from the man, the biological man and the biological woman. In other words, they're going to separate and not want to interact with each other, more so on the woman's side. Okay, more so on the woman's side. The men, what they're going to do is do whatever they can to get their so-called quote-unquote needs met. You're my property. You're my property. You know, they don't see uh, biological women as equal at all. You're my property. You're somebody I'm going to dump, somebody I want to fuck whenever I want to, and then toss you aside like, you you know, that's, that's, that's the results Okay, that's why we have more men serial killers, men that are rapists, you know, the men that are more so narcissistic, sociopaths, psychopaths, narcissistic, clerics, you know. And a lot of those biological men, I told you, they have that feminine 
uh, they did display inappropriate um, amounts of femininity as well. And what does that mean? Well, they don't want to get their hands dirty. Okay, they want to um, they want to be catered to. They want to be taken care of. They don't want to do any physical work at all. They rather be in the office or 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 be on their computers all day long. They don't want to go outside. Nope. I knew some people, and like I said, they, they, are, they are either my relatives, friends, associates, or strangers. I've had experiences with people, males, that do not and did not want to go outside. And they used to cry when their mothers told them to go outside. They would cry about that. And so, again, that's what I was picking up, and that's... All you got to do is just look at the results in your life and just be honest. Nobody has to know all this stuff I'm saying to you. This is going to be a long video, I know. No one needs to know all the things I'm talking to you about. But if you want to develop and be honest and grounded in reality and face our, re face our results, you'll see, you'll, you'll pick it up yourself with your senses, with your things being logical, rational, and reasonable, and why we are degenerate as we are and destructive and destroy things. That's what a biological man, men are doing in war constantly, you know, in war, raping women in these countries where they're so-called in war, you know, terrorizing women. The women are the target of their rage, not, not the people that they're supposed to be battling against. Is, is they go after the women and the children in these wars. They do not necessarily care about the men. The Vietnam War, perfect example of that. There were probably more women that died and children than men. Okay, and some of the women died at the hands of these soldiers, quote unquote, allegedly. Let's, let's make that clear so that people don't get all worked up about that. And at the same time, a lot of those soldiers, quote unquote, were being uh, indoctrinated, you know, uh, poisoned, you know, which, you know, causes uh, some damage to the consciousness, most definitely uh, experimented on and this and that and the other guinea pigs. A lot of the men were guinea pigs, all of them, possibly, and had no clue of it. And like I said, war causes more rage, and and this, and so like I said, they don't they see women as objects. They won't tell you that. Some will eventually, you know, see more of the value of a woman, like my father did, and understand. Okay, sometimes he has to come in and help, and he did. When she was sick, he would cook. When she was sick in the hospital, he would take care of all of us. Okay, he was a he was a he was a great model of a man to me, and I know several other people that I've come across, in in um, as far as a, a biological men, how they were taking care of their families, you know, and and how they were providing, and they they felt powerful in doing so, and felt proud to do that, you know. So, yes, um, because of the the the, the fear factor. That has been brewing for hundreds and hundreds of years. The biological woman is not going to find their protection in a man. That's not saying that they're going to be lesbians or bisexual or whatever. That's irrelevant. I told you that. That, that has nothing to do with it. It's about their self-preservation and their safety. Because they're the ones that usually have to take care of the children. Right? Or take care, just take care of people. Nurture them, love them, be kind. That's that feminine energy. And the reason why they, they, why a lot of people say, oh, she's just too masculine. You know, she has, I, I can pick up the feminine energy, I mean, it, in a second. But if, she, if this feminine energy, though, however, have kids, okay, yes, you're going to see a more masculine side of her. That's natural. She's protecting her children. She's protecting her house. She's protecting her home. She's protecting her property. She's protecting her livelihood. So, yes, you're going to see a more masculine side of her. That That's a quote-unquote 
term that's being used as well. She's not soft. Well, would you be soft if you felt a threat to your existence? Okay, so that's going to change. It's not saying that they're going to run to women, run to the so-called quote-unquote butch woman or masculine woman. No, that, that is best anything but true. They want a certain type of man. But that, those type of men are far and few in between. So that's why the incel communities get pissed off and upset because they blame it on the good-looking males. They, they blame it on the good-looking biological man. No, it has nothing to do with that. It's about, can you incel communities protect biological women? And in most cases, you cannot. You have no skills and abilities other than computers and virtuals. You don't want to get dirty. You barely come outside. You barely, you know. So, and then when you do come outside, you have these unrealistic expectations about women. You think that you can just walk up to a woman and she'll say yes to you. That may have happened hundreds of years ago. But a lot of the incel communities, they are, they barely take care of their physical. They Their teeth they, you know, they have disgusting teeth. I mean, they're, they're physical. You, you have to be presentable. They barely wash themselves. They barely clean themselves. I've seen it. I know. I can pick it up right away, too. You know, they don't want to do anything physical. Nope. Uh, like I said, taking out the trash can send them into a psychosis. Something's just that simple. And that's the, that's the degeneracy of their consciousness. That's a consciousness thing, okay? And so the reason why we have all of this, this uh, attempt to, to change the biology of ourselves is because of confusion. It's a massive confusion. It's going to cause massive, massive damage to the consciousness, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. Just because you cut off a part of your body doesn't change your biology. Just because you add something to your body doesn't change your biology. And though, so that's why we have all of this warped, pers uh, warped uh, behaviors and actions with, with surgery, with medication, with clothing, with you know. If you pay attention and you be gentle and kind to yourself, if you fit any any any. Uh, any uh, degenerate category because that, like I said, that goes across the board towards the, the woman and the man. You'll probably say, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. And just look at things objectively, subjectively, be abstract about it. You know, apply logic as you understand it. Be reasonable. Be gentle and kind. We have to take things there. This planet is, is, is going to be destroyed. Listen to me carefully on what I mean by that. Because of our neglect, because of our degeneracy, we've, and, and this has been, because this has happened over the course of 300 years. This has happened over the course of thousands of years. This has happened over the course of millions of years. We have, we are on the verge again to wiping this planet of human beings. And that's because of our population and our degeneracy and what's going to happen. But there's always survivors, though. There's always survivors. Or, yes, in most cases, unless the whole planet itself explodes and, you know, that's one thing. But planet Earth is doing everything in its power to correct things, and we're not going to like it. And Mother, and Mother Nature, when I say Earth, um, Mother Nature, Earth, wants to survive too. Okay? So that means what? Mother Nature is going to take care of things. Mother Nature does not, let's make this very clear, does not need human beings to survive. As a matter of fact, planet Earth flourishes without human beings. Planet Earth flourishes without human beings. So that means that what? Uh, billions and billions of people are going to get wiped out in one sweep or over a course of a short time. It's, it's not going to take, 
You're not gonna. It's not gonna be uh, happening um, slowly. It's gonna be a sweep. That way, that so that planet Earth can regenerate itself without the interference of human beings. Okay. So I said a lot in this video, and I and I'm doing this for a reason. I know that I resonate with certain people. I know that I uh, am providing some some value as I understand it and as my responsibility to the future young people, the future descendants. And, you know, when, when it starts happening, it's going to happen. It's not a goddamn thing any of us is going to do. That's why we don't necessarily know when disasters are going to happen for a reason. We've already we've we've always interfered and made it worse than it <coughs> ought to have been. We should not have been at these moments and times as to where we are. And a lot of people are not going to wake up in time to know what that is. A lot of people are going to have that dementia, you know that um, that form. It's a it's a different form of dementia, not the the, the classic one that everyone knows about this is a dementia that was self-made by human beings due to our lack of non-thinking and not understanding how to think properly and how to behave and act properly and, and thinking that we're clever and, and more powerful than we thought we you know than we think we are thinking that we can fool people with our eyes fool people with our sounds and tones and you know and realizing that we were just fooling ourselves you know, we were destroying ourselves. So just don't be surprised, you know, by what is going to start happening. And again, with Mother Nature, Mother Nature is going to make that sweep so quickly. You know, one day is sunny and bright and beautiful. And then the next day, okay. Because we're uncontrollable, we're unteachable, and more importantly, we're dangerous to not only ourselves, but to the universe in general. And it saddened me because, um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to witness some of this stuff or not. Um, I'm going to be confident and say that I am not going to be part of that couch, that, that, those, those, um, large collective events of things happening. I'm, I'm just saying that because, you know, I, you know, I pay attention to warnings. I do what I'm supposed to do. But then at the same time, if I happen to be involved or be a part of some of these disasters and destructions of the climate that are forthcoming, I mean, I do reborn. So it's just my, when I pass, you know, my baton get passed, it's just I don't know what my future personality is going to be left with, and that's um, that's the uh, the sadness of it all. Because it, you know, if we understood that it's we, I mean, it's I, we, and us instead of I, 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 me, 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 me. And so because of that uh, fault, that um, faulty thinking, or just non-thinking, simply non-thinking. You know, we've, uh, you know, we are digging our own graves and we have no one to blame but at each other, ourselves. And so I'm not going to be concerned during final, hour, be, during final hours of my life because my consciousness is, uh, you know, it's balanced for the most part. I'm still, I'm going to always be developing, but I understand and I'm grounded and, and I accept the realities of our situation. And it's not good. But everybody, it, for everybody else, you know, that, and, and like I said, everybody else is not listening to me. You know, it's, it's just still business as usual for them. It's about materialism, materialism, materialism. And there's not a goddamn thing any of us, whether we are attempting to help people or not, can do about that. So I've said a lot in this video. And, um, hey, it bees that way sometimes, you know, sometimes you got to put it out there. I don't have a problem with it. And I'm thankful, like I said, because there's like millions and millions of content out there. 
And the only way you resonate with me is because you are supposed to have resonated with me. That's that's just how it is. That's how it, that's how it rolls. It's the energy of our thoughts, which is constantly constantly being we're constantly being impulsed, and we our consciousness is uh, responsible for, for that. Our subconscious, and you know, to wake us up, to bring us to reality, and to help save some of us. Okay, so. I'm gonna say I'm gonna stop from now on this Friday, Ooh. Uh, March the 29th, 2024, on a Friday, Friday, Friday. I hope everybody is doing fantastic, magnificently, and marvelous, despite anything, everything going on. Because I am in the in the midst of all of this, and I'm telling you, it's gonna be devastating. A lot of things are gonna be devastating. I still can. I still find joy getting up in the morning. I find joy in doing what I need to do and how I can help myself and help others because I know it doesn't end when I, when this physical body ends, it doesn't end. It keeps going. So I hope that's some inspiration for you to keep going regardless of what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it feels like. Keep going. Okay. So I'm going to start right now. Go get my day started. So I'm going to send peace and love all over the stars and moon and mountains. It's about universal love. It's about honesty. Okay. It's about um, releasing yourself of these um, superficial uh, concepts. These irrelevant concepts. Suspend it. Suspend your beliefs. Suspend your conviction. Suspend your, um, your faith. Suspend it. And um, I know this is a, a quote-unquote good Friday for some. Well, I hope this is what I'm saying to you turns out to be a great Friday for you. Peace and love. And trust me, I'll be back.